Hello again, guys. We are now in 8.4, which is uh, our lesson over composition of isometries. Now, this seems kind of complicated, but if we break it down first, an isometry is just a transformation that preserves distance or length. So, everything we've talked about so far, our translations, our reflections, and our rotations are all isometries. Uh, the only thing that we'll get to, and I forget if it's this year or next year, um, but dilations change your size. So, uh, you can express all isometries as compositions of reflections. Um, now that is because a rotation can really be looked at as multiple reflections. So then if we look here, we've got translation, rotation, reflection, or a glide, and then a reflection, which is really like a translation and then a reflection. And then we've got reflections across parallel lines. So if I reflect ABC, to a prime b prime c prime but then i reflect it again my double prime shape ends up facing the exact same direction as my original shape because when i flip something twice it ends up just like it was originally so then what we see down here is that if i'm reflecting line m and reflecting line l and i'm doing this to point j what is the distance of the resulting translation? So when we're reflecting with the parallel line, say I take point J and I reflect over line L and I reflect over line M, the distance from J to J double prime is going to actually be twice the distance between L and M. So the distance from J to J prime should actually be pretty similar to the distance between the lines and then from J prime to J double prime is that same distance again. So then we get that double distance. So if we look at the composition of these um, reflections, we reflect F over the line L and then we reflect it again over the line M. So we actually end up with this. So my first reflection would give me this upside down F and then when I reflect again, I get the same as the resulting image and the distance between these would be twice the distance between L and M. So this composition gets a little bit weird because we have two intersecting lines and they intersect at a 45 degree angle. Now if I actually drew another line across the bottom here flat, we could see that this has um, created a 45 degree angle with the horizon and with the vertical line. So reflecting this J across a 45 degree line will actually uh, kind of look like it turns the J 90 degrees. And then when I reflect it across the line that is vertical, it's a straight line, so it just flips it straight across. So go ahead and try this on your own, pause the video, do the best that you can, and then come back for the answer. All right, so the results of these reflections, like I said, when I reflect over that 45 degree line, it looks as if it turns my shape 90 degrees, but because we reflected, again, whatever was pointing left now points up because we kind of draw those um, perpendicular lines. So since I would go perpendicular to here. I then have to go perpendicular up. And because it was pointing away, it still points away, which is now up. And then I do the same thing headed this direction and the opposite way here. So then I get my final uh, location after both reflections. So now, what do you think the relationship between the acute angle between the lines and the angle of rotation happens to be? So I actually have this answer for you right up here. So because um, the center of rotation is C, the angle of rotation ends up being 90 degrees because we went over the 45, which turned my shape 90 degrees. And then my final reflection did not rotate. Um, it just flipped it. So now check and see if you really understand this. If we um, compose these reflections, reflect the line M and then reflect the line L pause the video and actually do this. So if you're struggling, draw these little lines. So this line coming to M, then do the opposite going the other direction. Same thing here. Same thing with the point of my L. And since the point of my L is facing away from my line, I know that when I come on the opposite side, it will also point away from my line. So pause the video and try this on your own. So they actually go over line L first, so we reflect line L. And we could do this with every little corner, every little piece of the L actually. Then they reflect over line M. So we end up 
Um, and this is not straight up and down. So when we talk about what the actual angle of rotation was, my angle of rotation ended up being 170 degrees because remember, like we saw up top, it is double my um, acute angle in the um, intersection. So now we're gonna learn about this fancy schmancy glide reflection. So let's read this. Any composition of isometries can be represented by a reflection, translation, rotation, or glide reflection. So we can actually make anything happen. Now this paw print is a little bit hard to tell, but if you pay attention to the notch in the paw print, so this notch right here, Notice that it is to the right-hand side. As we glide, that notch stays on the right-hand side, but then as we reflect, that notch is now on the left-hand side because we reflect it over whatever was on the right, now is on the left, and vice versa. So now we have to remember our notation rules. So if I read this notation, it's a reflection, because it's capital R, about the um, line y equals zero, then we have to look at this as being a translation two to the right and two up. So the reflection happens after the translation. So we're going to take our shape P and B, we're going to translate it, then we're going to reflect it. So go ahead and try that on your own, draw it on your coordinate grid, and come back for the answer. If you can as well, try number six. That is going to be a reflection on the line y equals x, which is actually the diagonal line, and then we will have a translation, one to the left and one up. So I'm just going to talk through point P for uh, number five. So I would translate two to the right, which takes me here, then I translate two up, which takes me here. So this is really where I'm going to reflect from. So then if I reflect the line y equals zero, well that, tricky enough, is actually just the x-axis. So I come down to the x-axis and I say, okay, well I am perpendicular to the x-axis already and I'm four away. So I go perpendicular from the x-axis for the opposite direction and find my p double prime. You can do that with the n and the b points, uh, translate then reflect and get exactly where we are here. But I want to talk about number six for a moment. So this translation, one to the left would take my p over to here, then one up would take my p here. So this is really where my point starts to reflect. And then because I go at a 45 degree angle to my line of reflection, I keep that same 45 degree angle to come out to my prime point. And I find that this is actually where my prime point belongs. You can do the same with N and B. Whatever angle you um, come into the line at, you do the opposite angle away. So if we look at N, I'll translate one left and one up and I start here. Again, it's a 45 degree angle. So then N prime ends up over here. And B, funny enough, when I do the one to the left and one up and then reflect, it ends up back right at where it started. All right, so the last thing to think to yourself about is do you understand how to reflect? Do you understand how to translate? Do you understand how to rotate? And if you understand all of those, then you should be good for our test, um, assuming that you can then compose those um, different translations to make one combined isometry. So that is all I have for 8.4. So please make sure that you have worked over all the material and understand everything that we've covered today. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if any of this is confusing for you. Uh, one of the things just to uh, kind of solidify here at the end uh, that will throw some people off is this actually happens first, then this happens second. So when I'm composing isometries, uh, the, the one written second actually happens first, and the one written first actually then happens second. So just a little clarification there. Uh, please let me know if you're having any issues. Other than that, have a wonderful day.